Hey everyone, I'm Hoki Hoshi. I'm PTG Jamie. And I'm Vuku. And today, we're here to show you how to build the perfect rally car for your very own rally adventure. For this tutorial, we've picked the 9th generation Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution, an all-wheel drive rally racing icon that's perfectly at home on pavement, dirt, or anything else you can throw at it. This is going to be a great platform for our rally build, so let's dive into the upgrades and show how we can turn this factory fresh road car into an unstoppable rally machine. Now when building cars, I find it best to start with conversions and work my way back, adding power last. This Evo can fit the turbo rally engine swap, and the lightweight of this engine combined with its strong power curve makes it a great choice for our build. Next up is aero and appearance. Options here will have an effect on the car's weight, air resistance, and whether or not you can adjust downforce in tuning. Since we're making a rally car though, we've got to make it look like a rally car much better. Now let's change up the tires. We're definitely going to need a different compound as our Evo comes stock with road tires. The two best choices here would be either rally or off-road race. As the name suggests, off-road race tires handle really well in sand dunes, dirt, or any other unpaved surfaces, and they don't add too much to our PI score. But since this new map offers a great mix of both paved and unpaved tracks, we've got to pick the rally tires here, which perform well both on and off-road. And I'm also going to widen the track width and tires to improve grip and handling. Next up is the drivetrain. Upgrading your clutch and transmission can be key to lowering your shift times and giving you faster acceleration, especially if you play on the automatic shift setting. We're going to use the sport clutch and race transmission, as well as upgrading our differential to unlock some very important tuning settings you'll see later in the video. Now let's dive into platform and handling. Since the track we're going to be testing on today has a lot of tight corners and challenging braking sections, we are going to upgrade the brakes one notch. This won't be enough to unlock brake tuning, but don't worry, Jamie will still show you how to tune that later in the video. We're also going to upgrade to Rally Suspension, which changes up the suspension dynamics, gives us a nice bump in ride height, and unlocks more important tuning settings. And we'll follow that up with upgraded anti-roll bars, which let us dial in our handling even further. Finally, let's take some more weight out of the car by applying the race weight reduction. Reducing a car's weight greatly improves acceleration and handling, making the car much more nimble and controllable, which we're gonna need on these roads. Now it's time to add power. Since the turbo rally engine is already built for racing, we only have a few upgrade paths here. I'm going to increase the displacement from 1.6 to 2 liters, and since we've got a turbo installed, we also have access to turbo upgrades. And this is where I can show you one of the expansion's most exciting new features, anti-lag. Besides sounding amazing, this upgrade is a great pick for rally builds as it helps keep boost pressure high even when you're not on the gas, improving acceleration and throttle response. You'll be able to see and hear this in action later during the test drive. And with that, we've got a car with a performance index of 800, putting us right at the top of A-Class. This will ensure we stay competitive with other cars we race against in Forza Horizon 5 Rally Adventure. And now that the building process is complete, I'm going to pass it over to our tuning expert, Jamie, who's going to take the car out on the road and explain how to make tuning adjustments to squeeze every ounce of performance out of your car builds. And then Vuku, our driver, will get the chance to give our Evo 9 its final test. All right, everyone, let's start off with the tires and why tire pressure is very important. The goal is to maximize traction and response from both ends of the car. Lower pressures can provide good grip and a smoother loss of traction, while higher pressures can increase how quickly the car responds to your input. Watching telemetry can be helpful to dial in your pressures and ensure your tires aren't overheating. On PC, you can open up telemetry by hitting the letter T on your keyboard. And on consoles, you can switch it with the ANA input on default controller layouts. Let's move along into the transmission. Finding the best number of gears, gear lengths, and shift times for the vehicle and track will give you a critical advantage over other tunes. You will want to match each gear shift to your maximum torque and horsepower ratings. Telemetry can help you find where your power starts to fall off. Shorter gears will improve acceleration through each gear, but can also lower top speed and increase the amount of times 
you'll need to shift during a race. Starting off now into the suspension categories, the suspension's main role is to keep as much of the tire in contact with the road surface at all times. Camber adjustments are made to maintain the maximum amount of tire tread touching the road through the corners. To help dial this in, you can monitor temperature differences between the inside and outside of your tires while in telemetry. You want the inside of the tire to be hotter, but not by too much. Front toe is utilized to help minimize tire scrub and rolling resistance while cornering. Toe out can improve responsiveness and increase oversteer at the cost of high speed stability. Rear toe settings have a similar effect. Negative toe here can stabilize the rear end and reduce oversteer. Be careful, as small toe adjustments can have a big effect. Caster helps the car center itself. A high caster value can make the car feel like it wants to go in the direction of your steering input, but note that a high caster setting will also increase camber in the corners. As we move along into our suspension portion, the anti-roll bars are used to increase the roll stiffness of the vehicle. As you start to turn, the body of the vehicle will start to roll on the springs. Without anti-roll bars, only the springs are providing the resistance to that rolling force. Stiffening anti-roll bars reduces body roll by linking the left and right sides of the suspension. A softer front setting can improve turning ability and grip at the cost of turning response, while the rear setting can be used to control the amount of oversteer entering and exiting the corners. On rally cars, it often helps to use softer anti-roll bars to help each wheel move more independently over rough surfaces. Now, fine-tuning the overall suspension balance can help to eliminate weaknesses in the vehicle's handling characteristics. A softer front end can increase oversteer, while softening the rear can help stabilize the car. Ride heights make a difference as well. For smooth tracks, you can go to a lower setting to improve the car's center of gravity. For uneven ground such as a rally or off-road tunes, you will want to raise the ride height as needed to keep the car from bottoming out. As we move along into the dampers, the dampers work in conjunction with the springs to form the basis for the car suspension system. Dampers help to smooth out vertical movements in the suspension and keep the spring movements controlled. Softer front settings can improve front grip and softer rear settings can improve rear grip, but it is important to have enough bump stiffness to be able to deal with uneven surfaces or your car will start to feel floaty and unresponsive. When it comes to the use of aerodynamics, remember that creating downforce on a vehicle is the exact opposite of how an airplane's wings help it stay in the sky. On race cars, it is used to push the car down to the ground. Handling and grip can be vastly improved when adding aero to your tune. The aim is to add downforce efficiently so that we add as much downforce as possible with as little gain in drag as possible. Drag, or the air resistance, affects the acceleration of the vehicle as well as its top speed. A higher front downforce is usually the most efficient, whereas an excessive rear setting can add a lot of drag and reduce high speed acceleration. As we go on into the braking systems, please keep in mind that braking is also an adjustable ratio between the percentage of braking force sent to the front and the rear wheels. Contrary to what some might think, a 50-50 brake setting is wrong for most cars and many will lean towards more front brake pressure, but it is crucial to note that there is no golden ratio here. More braking pressure in the rear can make the car feel unstable under heavy braking, but too much front pressure will reduce your ability to turn while applying the brakes. Moving along into the differential, the differential is all about putting the power to the wheels and it plays a huge role in your car's handling and acceleration out of corners. The quickest tuned car will always be the one that can lay down more power sooner and stay on the throttle longer than the rest of the field. A higher acceleration lock will improve acceleration, but can cause loss of grip and cornering ability if it's set too high. A higher deceleration value can help stabilize your car during corner entry and in an all-wheel drive vehicles, the center differential controls the balance of power going to the front and the rear axles and is a great tool to dial in more or less oversteer. Now, finally, let's talk a bit more about the anti-lag system, which is used to eliminate turbo lag and was originally designed for use in rally racing. It keeps the turbo spinning at full boost even while the engine is at low RPMs. This means the driver has near instant power coming out of corners and in between gear changes where every second counts. Let's not forget that the anti-lag also sounds and looks amazing. 
And with that, our rally car is complete. To put it to the final test, we're taking our Evo to Meridian, a tight and technical course that takes us past the town of Pueblo Arza, through Lago Azulado River, and along the edge of an ancient crater impact. It's a great example of what Sierra Nueva has to offer, and will be a perfect place to test our build on a variety of different road conditions. Vuku will be in the driver's seat for this one, so Vuku, take it away. Thanks, Jamie. For the final portion of the tutorial, I'll be explaining why we've adjusted the tune settings and demonstrate what a beginner or professional can achieve after their preferred tuning adjustments have been made. Right away, you'll notice the new anti-lag feature at work, creating those iconic exhaust explosions, allowing us to keep the rev limit high for instant boost pressure. With the new launch control feature working in tandem with anti-lag, we have full control and instant acceleration off the line. Do you notice how the car accelerates further and faster without having to shift immediately? Well, this is the final drive and gearing adjustments at work. We've pivoted the final drive ratio towards speed and increased the individual gears towards acceleration, thus allowing us to outperform the competition. Additionally, we've lowered our tire pressure for increased grip, adjusted the angle of the front and rear wheels to tow out for better turning response, and we've run a higher percentage setting for both acceleration and deceleration differentials to ensure maximum traction. Combining these tuning adjustments will allow us to successfully navigate the sudden turns, blind crests, and challenges posed throughout Sierra Nueva and specifically Dirt Rally Meridian. As Meridian is a multi-surfaced rally track, we're utilizing softer rebounding stiffness in the front and a more rigid rebounding stiffness in the rear when compared to the default settings. This will help with cornering on the asphalt, dirt, and rugged terrain that lies ahead. Now we want to avoid excess understeer, which is when the car doesn't turn as much as we want it to, and avoid excess oversteer, which is when the car turns more than we want it to. Finding the right balance between the two is essential. Now that you have a basic understanding of building a rally car, utilizing the telemetry to identify opportunities of improvement, and applying this knowledge to make your own tuning adjustments, we can't wait to see what your car can do out here in Sierra Nueva. Remember, there is always room for improvement, and don't be discouraged if you find yourself making adjustments along the way. This is completely normal and all part of becoming a professional builder and tuner. Well, I think we can call that a success. We hope this video gave you a good look into building the perfect rally car to tackle Sierra Nueva in Forza Horizon 5's Rally Adventure. I'm Vuku. I'm PTG Jamie. And I'm Hokey Hoshi. Thank you so much for watching and happy building.